everybody, my name is Soon, and welcome to an all new Let's Play series featuring Legend of Grimrock. I have been trying to keep myself from looking at this game so that it's going to be a blind playthrough. It was just released today, and I'm very excited to take a crack at it. So let's start a new game. Difficulty, okay, hardest is hard. Scales monster damage, speed, and aggressiveness, and combat. This setting can't be changed after starting the game. Check this option if you prefer to customize your characters instead of playing them with, pre with the predetermined party. Old school mode turns off the auto mapping capability. Arm yourself with a stack of grid paper and pencils and be prepared to get lost in the dungeons. Beware you can't change this setting after starting. Yeah, let's go with that. And I think I will create my characters. So. And I'm playing on hard mode just because that's what I like to do. Play everything on the hardest difficulty, so. Different dungeons. Oh, never mind. Maybe that's a uh, DLC. Oh, okay, it said there. Currently only one dungeon, but expansions and user made content will be added here. Cool. Alright, so four characters. Um, based on the things that I did see about this game, it looks a lot like the old school Eye of the Beholder type games where you're just dungeon crawling with four guys. Um, possibly up to six later, I don't know. I don't know anything about the game. So, we have dis different races here. We have human, minotaurs, lizard men, insectoids, and that's it. So, oh man, the choices. The choices, the choices. Hmm. Well, I'll name the main guy soon. And... Oh, I see. Those are different portraits. Okay. Minotaurs are pretty cool. Lizard men. Interesting. Insectoids. Oh, okay. I can read about them. Oh, I see. They have different bonuses and such. So, the human. Humans are the most populous and sentient races in the world. They are very adaptable and can excel in all professions. They have four skill points. Whatever that means. Oh, I see. Skill points right here. Minotaurs are bulky, simple, and keen to violence. They are tolerated in cities only because of their ability to do labor that demands great strength and stamina. They have five, plus five to strength, minus four dexterity, plus four vitality, minus three willpower, uh, one skill point, and food consumption is plus 20%. So I guess they eat more food than your average Joe Minotaur. No, I don't know what I was going with that, or where I was going with that. Lizard men are social outcasts and generally mistrusted due to their capricious and deceitful nature. They are superb in tasks requiring stealth and dexterity. So they have plus two to dexterity and minus one willpower and three skill points. Insectoids mostly keep to themselves and rarely wander into the lands of humankind. It is believed that their knowledge of the arcane is unrivaled. So they have a minus two to strength, plus one dexterity, minus two vitality, and plus four willpower. They have three skill points and minus 15% food consumption, so they have to eat less. I think I'll do one of each um, race here. Um, I'll be the human, I suppose. I'll be shackled up with these other creatures. Or is it wrong to call them creatures? I don't know. I might have just offended the Minotaurs, Lizard Men, and Insectoids out in the world. My bad. <laughs> so, uh, okay, random names. I might have to do that for the other guys. We'll see. I'm not very creative. So, yes, I will be a human, and I will be a... I will be a fighter. Fighters master, are masters of close combat, and they are trained to use a, a wide variety of weapons and armor. Mages use their enchanted staves and orbs to command great mystical powers that can be used to cause harm or to protect. Oh, okay. And rogues are stealthy warriors who can fight with, a, with ranged weapons or sneak behind enemies for a deadly backstab attack. Um, maybe I'll be a rogue instead. Hmm. Sounds interesting. Oh, man. I 
Then again, if I'm gonna be a rogue, I, I might want to be a lizard man. You know, I kind of want to be a human. Humans are kind of good at everything. I'll just be a fighter, and I'll make the other guys whatever. I hope rogues can... See, I don't know exactly how this game's gonna work. I don't know if rogues can use bows, or if that's uh, the fighter. If there are if there even are bows in this, I have no idea. I'm basing this off of uh, that old school game that I was talking about, Eye of the Beholder. So, which is an old DOS game. Uh, so I'm just going to assume that it won't be terrible. So. I will play a fighter, human, human fighter. So, seems I can put points in here. Yes, okay. Well, we're gonna want strength. Strength is a physical prowess and strength of character. It increases your attack power and carrying capacity. Dexterity is the ability to move quickly and perform maneuvers that demand accuracy and a keen eye. Accuracy and evasion are based on the character's dexterity. Vitality represents the overall health and stamina of your character. It affects the amount of health points gained at first and subsequent levels and helps protect um, and helps to get rid of harmful conditions. I don't know why I said protect. I don't even know where I saw that word. Willpower is the force, the mind, and the ability to manipulate arcane powers. It affects the amount of energy points gained at first and subsequent levels. So that's definitely a mage thing accuracy so we're probably gonna want a nice balance between strength dexterity and vitality for a fighter so I want to be maybe somewhere around in this area I might have to do 13 let's do 14 strength 13 dex 13 vitality okay and then we have skills Athletics. The skill represents the time spent in exercising your physique. Spending points in this skill increases your physical ability scores. Okay, so at level 2, you get plus 1 strength, level 5, plus 2 vitality, and level 8, you get plus 10 health. And based on the ellipsis after the plus 10, it might continue on after that, I'm not sure. Armors. Armor's skill represents fighter's knowledge of armors and defensive combat techniques. Spending points in this skill improves the effectiveness of equipped armor and your character's defensive abilities. Um, so we'll get protection and health from that. Axes increases your character's training with axes. By increasing this skill, your attack power, accuracy, and chance for performing special attacks increases. The aforementioned bonuses apply only when fighting with an axe. Of course. Uh, maces, the skill represents your character's training with maces. Um, same thing, just you get different uh, level abilities there. For instance, you got plus one strength, plus five health for this one. And for the maces, you get plus one vitality, and plus five health. And then you get bash, a bone shattering blow that deals double damage. And then there's swords, which is... Again, the same kind of description, plus one strength, plus five health, and then slash, a powerful slash that cuts flesh to the bone. Um, for those of you who are following my Dungeons of Dreadmore Let's Play, uh, I'm already using swords in there, so I kind of want to switch it up a little bit. So he's going to use a mace. So we'll put one in mace, and then there's unarmed combat. I don't even want to try that. Because I'm playing on a blind playthrough on hard difficulty, so I'm probably going to get my ass beat. Uh, athletics. Kind of wanted to be a little bit tanky. But we'll get more strength from this. I have one more point. Will I get a bonus? I'll get plus one protection. I'm assuming you'll get more of these as you level. You would have to. So, let's do another one in armor just so we can get that plus one protection bonus. So, here's the description of protection. It just says, protection is combined 
is the combined protection value of all equipped armor, clothes, and other defensive gear. Protection decreases physical damage of attacks against the character. Accuracy. Self-explanatory. I don't need to read that. It's your chance to hit. Same with attack power. It's how, it's how hard you hit. Evasion. Your chance to dodge. And then you have different resistances here against elements. Pretty cool. Traits. What are these? Huh. Aggressive. You are full of rage. Plus four attack power. Agile. Plus two dexterity. Athletic. Plus two strength. Or uh, energy plus 15. Resist cold. Plus 25. Evasive. Plus seven evasion. Demon ancestor. Plus 25. Resist fire. Fist fighter. Plus six against unarmed. Or plus six when unarmed. Uh, head hunter. You need a need to be a minotaur for that one, which is plus three attack for each skull carried. That's interesting. Apparently, you collect skulls in this. Healthy, you are exceptionally healthy. Plus two vitality, natural armor, which is for the insectoid, which you get plus five protection for. Well, that's pretty interesting. Uh, poison resistant, plus twenty five poison resist. Skilled, you get plus three skill points. That might not be terrible to have. Strong mind, plus two willpower, and tough, plus 15 health. Well, that's a pretty, uh, pretty tough call. I think what I'm going to do is, because I want him to be kind of more tanky, then, well, again, Minotaurs are like super fucking tanky, aren't they? Look at that. Man. But they conceive more food, so I don't know if that's going to be an issue like how it was in Eye of the Beholder. I was constantly starving to death, so let's go with. I kind of want to go with base stat increasers, things that'll help me all around. So let's go with will be athletic and and we'll be healthy so we won't be very accurate but that's okay prisoner oh so I guess we're prisoners huh all right oh I kind of want to change my portrait, maybe. Uh, okay, that, that one will do, actually. <laughs> okay, Minotaur. I like this guy. He looks angry. He's going to constantly smash stuff. He's also going to be a fighter. So, your dexterity is really bad, so we probably need to try to make up for that. And that's as much as I can increase that. So let's jack up your... Take your strength to an 18 and your vitality to a 15. Let's actually take this down. Let's make him even tougher. So that seems to be a, a decent loadout there. I mean, I, re I really have no idea. I have nothing to base it off of. Uh, so we have one skill. The Minotaur is going to use axes. Because I'm, I don't know, I'm picturing him using like a big ass two handed axe or something. So that's what he's going for. Let me just double check. Make sure he doesn't get a bonus to any particular weapon type. He does not. Okay. So. I want to give him this just because it's a race specific trait so I'm gonna go ahead and go for that one and uh, what do I want to do here could get more skill points I could give him even more strength. Take his strength up to 20. We get what? One 
more attack power for doing that. Oh no, we get uh, much more. Yeah, let's do that. Let's give him. Yeah, because if I can find some heads, then his attack power will be pretty good. So there's the Minotaur. Next up, we're going to create a rogue. And he's going to be a lizard man. Something roguey like. That guy seems fairly roguelike. Uh, see, these two. Actually, these three just strike me as mages. I don't know. Probably just the color of the robes they're wearing. He's in kind of like a, a dirty brown color. So, we'll do that. So, he's going to want to have high dexterity. Uh, energy points. I don't know if anybody uses energy other than mages. I have no idea, so. Oh, well based on how it says manipulate arcane powers it's yeah it's probably just mages so we'll give you a little bit of strength and a little bit of vitality okay he has different skills assassination this skill represents your training in the way of the assassin as you progress in this skill you gain access to deadly and precise melee techniques uh, level 4, you get plus 1 strength. Level 8, you get backstabbing, which is double damage if you attack from behind. Um, level 12, reach attack. I wonder if I can just... No, it doesn't seem like I can just click on it and then scroll. No, so... Reach attack, attack with melee weapons from back now... Or back row. Oh, I see, you can attack with melee from the back row. Well, that seems pretty good. Uh, daggers. Aha, missile weapons. That's what I want. I want him to be good with a bow. So... If I, get, if I can get that to level 4, I'll get plus 1 dexterity. Dodge. If he's going to be in the back row, do I really need dodge? It depends on how often I get attacked from behind, I suppose. I think what we'll do is, just in case, we'll give him two dodge to jack his evasion up to, wow, well, it's going to be 19, because, yeah, we'll get a plus five evasion bonus for two points in dodge, and then I'll throw the other one in, oh, there's no other one, so just one in missiles, missile weapons for now. Um, same looking traits from, from what I can see. Agile is probably going to be pretty good. I'll make him skilled. And I'll increase this to 4 so I get the plus 1 dexterity bonus. Plus, I'm assuming he'll be better with bows. I want him to be good with bows and crossbows. And our second one... I think I'm going to go with Agile, or Agile, however you want to say it. Yeah, so... So that is... Oh, I need to make names for these guys. Where's in... Hmm. Maybe I'll just steal from a book here. Okay, he's going to be a shifter. And you, lizard man, you will be... You'll be soul catcher. And last but not least, our insectoid. Now look at these. Checking. Okay. He will be a mage. Jack your willpower up as much as I can. 
I don't need strength for you. I'm not worried about that. So I'll just give you the brutality so you're not a little baby. Okay. Uh, air magic. This skill represents your character's training in air magic. You obtain the power to cast new spells and increase the efficiency of air spells as you advance in the skill. In order to learn a spell, you also need to find a scroll explaining the runes of the spell. Interesting. So air, earth, fire, ice. Assuming those descriptions are pretty much all the same. Spellcraft. Spellcraft skill represents your overall progress in the way of magic. Advancing in the skill enables you to cast more spells before exhausting your energy reserves. Or energy reserve. Staff defense. The skill improves the mage's defensive abilities. Not too worried about that. Spellcraft seems like it would be handy. Then again, it seems like having each of these, because I don't really know what what scrolls I'm going to find. So I feel like I should not dedicate to just one thing. So let's go fire, ice, and we'll go spellcraft. Hold that thought. We'll go skilled. Then we'll get air magic also and earth magic. Uh, I'm not too worried about that. Plus one willpower. I can get an actual spell from fire, it seems. So whatever whatever spell that is, I will get it, I think. Maybe. So, and another trait. I'm thinking I'll just go with this just because it's, you know, the insect insectoid race specific trait, so why not? I'm trying not to min max as much as I can, except for this part. <laughs> Alright, so you will be named Stormbreaker. I know they're cheesy names, but if anyone can leave a comment for what I took those names from, I'll give you a hint. There are three of the ten that were taken probably haven't read the book but somebody out there might so here's our group let's start the game a towering spire looms above the clouds a weathered rock has stood tall for ages longer than histories of men have written down it is a desolate place now, only remembered when things need to be discarded and forgotten. An airship struggles to gain altitude as it floats towards the peak. Four prisoners, bound by heavy change, emerge from the ship. The court accuses them of terrible treasonous, de treasonous deeds, but by the king, but by the grace of the king. Their crimes shall be forgiven atop Mount Grimrock. I forgot how to read in the middle of that sentence. I really like the art for this. It's pretty cool. Their final trial is at hand. Numerous prisoners have received their pardons here, yet none have returned to live their life in freedom. They are at the very top of the world, and below them only darkness and justice awaits. As they are plunged down the open maw at the peak, their crimes are absolved. Everyone before them has perished in the guts of the mountain, but will you be able to lead them through the dark and to freedom that awaits them at the base of the Mount Grimrock? So it begins. 